بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم very important topic الحقيقة النهاردة topics كلها مهمة وهتلاقوا حضراتكو كل specialities وكل diabetes comorbids and complications are discussed today and I'm going to talk about challenging Ramadan fasting in diabetic patients let me start first to um, appreciate all efforts done by DAR. And it's usually my pleasure being one of DAR team. And let me also appreciate all efforts done by A ADA and EASD to produce the guidelines and consensus for Ramadan fasting in people with diabetes. But in spite of these efforts, Fasting Ramadan in special circumstances and diabetes comorbidities is a major challenge and needs more research. To fast or not to fast, how to assess how to minimize the risk of fasting Ramadan, these important topics are going to be uh, discussed today in more than 20 lectures in this conference. In spite of the possible hypoglycemia, we find that 30% of the patients do not break their fast when they uh, feel hypoglycemia or when they have hypoglycemia, while 65% of the patients break their fast. This is very alarming. 30% or 31% of the patients do not break the fast when there is hypoglycemia. Let me start with different case scenarios and one case which is very important and we want to close this issue forever. Fasting in pregnant diabetic lady. Mrs. Mona, 28 years old, having type 1 diabetes since four years. And now she's pregnant in her third month and wish to fast next Ramadan. This is type 1 diabetes who became pregnant. And another profile of diabetes with pregnancy, Mrs. Noha, is a 36 years old. She was discovered to have gestational diabetes during the fifth month of pregnancy. And she wished to fast next Ramadan. Another type of diabetes with pregnancy, which is gestational diabetes. During pregnancy, we need optimal glycemic control, either for gestational diabetes or for pre-existing diabetes. And the management is basal bolus insulin treatment, basal insulin, either uh, insulin Ditimer or Glargine as an alternative to NBH and bolus insulin, we may use insulin aspart, insulin Lispro instead of regular insulin. And to encourage the patient to do SMBG pre and post prandially. This is the target glucose level needed for pre-existing diabetes. Fasting plasma glucose of less than 95 one hour postprandial blood glucose less than 140 milligram and two hours less than 120 milligram. This is very tight control and this is very alarming and may lead to hypoglycemia. This is the ADA and American Association for Clinical Endocrinology guidelines. For those patients with gestational diabetes, the preprandial should be less than 95. And for patients with pre-existing type 1 or type 2 diabetes, again, the pre-meal and bedtime and overnight plasma glucose should be between 60 and 90 99, which is actually impossible. For postprandial blood glucose level in patients with gestational diabetes, one hour post meal, 140 milligram, less than 140 milligram, and two hours post meal, less than 120 milligram, and the peak post prandium 
glucose between 100 and 129 in patients with pre-existing type 1 or type 2 diabetes. And the hemoglobin A1C should be less than 6%. Again, very challenging to have these numbers in uh, patients with diabetes and impossible to have during Ramadan fasting. These are the complications of pregnancy on the mother and on the baby during pregnancy. Ladies are having impaired counter-regulation and hypoglycemia unawareness, failure in the physiological protective mechanism to hypoglycemia, and around 45 to 71 percent of type 1 women during pregnancy are having severe hypoglycemia. Severe hypoglycemia can happen three to five times more frequently during the first trimester. Next to it will be the third trimester. The effect of hypoglycemia on the fetus is controversial. Is it possible to cause teratogenicity or not? There is low level of maternal glucose during pregnancy, which may cause fetal gross retardation and small for gestational age infants. Maternal hypoglycemia may lead to impaired fetal beta cell function. Again, a group of problems during pregnancy, placental insufficiency with hypoglycemia, possible GKA, which is fatal to the fetus, neonatal hypoglycemia, very high incidence of severe hypoglycemia happening between 19 to 44% of patients reported in this trial. And uh, a, a study done in 2008 showed that type 1 diabetic, 45% of the patients experienced episodes of hypoglycemia. On the baby, hypoglycemia may affect the fetal outcomes, may cause fetal gross retardation, small for age infants, and impaired fetal beta cell function. There is hazardous effect of, uh, of recurrent hypoglycemia on the adult brain. So what's going to happen for the fetal brain with recurrent hypoglycemia during pregnancy? Therefore, we cannot guarantee the safety of the maternal fasting during Ramadan on long-term fetal brain health. This study was done by Mergani and uh, Hamid, found higher rate of induction of labor and cesarean section and admission to the special care unit when these pregnant ladies fasted uh, during uh, Ramadan, uh, those patients were, were pregnant diabetics. Diabetes or gestational diabetes during pregnancy increased the risk of unfavorable maternal and fetal outcomes. Therefore, women and women with diabetes who become pregnant are instructed to avoid Ramadan fasting. This is um, a fact that should be closed with the patient. Please don't let any of your pregnant diabetic ladies fast during Ramadan. What about fasting and lactation? During lactation, ladies uh, may experience hypoglycemia. So according to the ADA, there is instruction either to have meals just before lactation or during lactation to avoid hypoglycemia. And glucose control during lactation is challenging. So they uh, may be uh, advised not to fast when they are lactating and uh, Islam سمح للسيدة المرضى أنها تفطر فما حال لو كانت diabetic بتاخد insulin ده uh, another uh, cause to uh, break the fast. Another case uh, scenario, diabetes in geriatric times and actually this coming uh, patient is not going to be just a geriatric patient but this case is full of complications and comorbidities. 
The risk of hypoglycemia may lead to impaired cognition in geriatric uh, persons with uh, diabetes in the elderly. Older adults may have neuroglycopenic manifestations of hypoglycemia, like dizziness, weakness, delirium, confusion, which may be missed as a neurological defect. And actually, adrenergic manifestations like tremors and sweating may be absent in geriatric patients with hypoglycemia. And if the condition is missed for a primary neurological defect like transient ischemic attack, there is going to be an inappropriate management of hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia account for 17% of hospital admission in type 2 diabetics uh, of the elderly. Age per se should not be a barrier to safe fasting during Ramadan but comorbidities and complications and deteriorating renal function, the presence or the possible presence of cardiovascular disease, the hypoglycemia or hypoglycemia unawareness may be a barrier to Ramadan fasting. This is a case scenario of a 69 years old female housewife. She's diabetic, type 2 diabetes since seven years. She's taking DPP-4 inhibitor and metformin, and DPP-4 inhibitors are popular medication for geriatric age and also for Ramadan, but this patient is having other comorbidities and complications. She's hypertensive on ACE inhibitor plus amlodipine. She's also on clopidogrel aspirin combination for recurrent TIA attack, and the last one was nine months before Ramadan. Um, we're going to find that the use of anticoagulation um, is hazardous for those patients who need anticoagulation. Anticoagulants are not working safely during Ramadan fasting or even antiplatelet like clopidogrel or aspirin. And also the presence of his history of transient ischemic attack. If the patient is having a recent history of transient ischemic attack, this may be uh, a reason to advise the patient not to fast. She has no evidence of other cardiovascular disease, and her hemoglobin A1C is 7.4. She's having advanced retinopathy. Again, is advanced retinopathy a cause to prevent this patient from fasting or not? Her blood pressure is 150 over 90, needs more control. Examination is unremarkable from mild edema of the lower limb. She's hypothyroid and she undergone thyroidectomy five years ago for multinodular goiter. TSH on 100 microgram is nine. Then she's not yet controlled. She needs increase of uh, the uh, thyroid replacement hormone. She's on statin for dyslipidemia. She has evidence of macroalbuminuria, although her GFR is 61. Can this patient fast or not? She's having many comorbidities and ma many complications. And advances in medical care and improved social conditions increased the life expectancy. And the diabetes epidemic in older adults will increase. According to the IDF 9th Atlas, one in five people with diabetes is above the age of 65. Diabetes in old age is a risk factor for dementia, falls, hip fracture, CVG, amputation, and visual impairment. Elderly people with diabetes have an increased risk of volume depletion, which is again a problem during Ramadan, dehydration and volume depletion. Thus, fasting during Ramadan in this group may affect their postural balance and attention and may increase the risk for fall or fall-related injuries. 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الآية الكريمة ومن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر صدق الله العظيم This study was done by AASD in 2018 What is the number of fasting days in Egyptian people with diabetes? 98% of those diabetics fast during Ramadan or they intended to fast during Ramadan. And patients completed the Ramadan fasting, they were 79% uh, of the cases. Again, uh, the, this is uh, Zadar survey and this question was given to the participants. Did you break your fast because of diabetes-related illness? And 20% of the Egyptian people with diabetes did not break the fast due to um, associated illness with diabetes. And another question, did you have to break your fast during Ramadan because of hypos? And 35% of the patients did not break the fast during uh, hypoglycemia. This is, again, very alarming. The patient need to be educated and to be told that once you have hypoglycemia, uh, please break your fast. This study, again, was done by our association. Culturally based pre-Ramadan education increased benefit and reduced hazards of Ramadan fasting for type 2 diabetes. Actually, pre-Ramadan education could um, give the patient more information about hypoglycemia and how to deal with hypoglycemia and when to break the fast during hypoglycemia. This study was published in the... Um, IGF uh, conference together with uh, journals. Another trial, um, uh, according to the DAR uh, Global Survey 2020, was about Ramadan fasting and the impact of older age on fasting among adults with type 2 diabetes. And this is the percentage of people having hypoglycemic attack and the timing of hypoglycemic attack around the day, whether in those below the age of 65 or above the age of 65. And these are the pathophysiological cardiovascular consequences of hypoglycemia. There may be increased risk of increased blood coagulation and increased sympathoadrenal response uh, endothelial dysfunction, increased risk of uh, arrhythmia, increased contractility and consumption, oxygen consumption, rhythm abnormality. Many cardiovascular complications are happening due to hypoglycemia. Uh, another trial showed the hypoglycemia results uh, in ECG abnormalities. There may be rhythm abnormalities, uh, R wave amplification, abnormality in atrioventricular conduction, ventricular depolarization, and repolarization, uh, many uh, effects of hypoglycemia on the ECG. Another article about the link of hypoglycemia and acute cardiovascular um, events in type 2 diabetes, retrospective observational trial assessing the association between hypoglycemia and the events and acute cardiovascular events, and 3% of the patient had hypoglycemic event during the evaluation period. And patients with hypoglycemic events had 79% higher odds for acute cardiovascular events uh, uh, in comparison with patients without hypoglycemic events. Uh, how to manage fasting in elderly patients? For safe fasting in the elderly, pre-Ramadan focused diabetes education on safe fasting and when to break the fasting during hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia or dehydration and to improve the hypoglycemia awareness, and to stress on home blood glucose monitoring. 
good de de hydration, especially in summer with longer uh, duration of fasting. And actually, we need to know which patient to fast and which is advised not to fast if the patient is living alone on older generation of sulfonylurea or in insulin, then the patient should be advised not to fast. Um, and if the patient is healthy enough with no comorbidity or complication and is on safe medication, uh, like we're going to know today uh, which are the safe medications uh, for fasting, and if the patient is old but with no complication, with no um, comorbidity, and is on safe medication, then the patient is allowed to fast, provided you are giving pre-Ramadan education and also instruction for fa safe fasting. DPP-4 inhibitors should be used over sulfonylurea as second-line therapy after metformin. When using sulfonylurea, glycolazide like MR and glimepride should be used instead of glypenclamide. And meglitinides may be used instead of glyporid. These are safe medications or more safe than other medications. And basal insulin analogs may be used instead of NBH. جمعية العربية لدراسة أمراض السكر والميتابوليزم توجهت في 2008 لدار الإفتاء والحقيقة إن إحنا حصلنا على فتوى يعني قمة سماحة مضاها الأستاذ دكتور محمد وسام خضر والنهاردة عندنا ندوة مع الأستاذ دكتور محمد وسام خضر مستشار فضيلة المفتي وهنسأله كل الأسئلة اللي إحنا عايزين نسألها this is a summary and recommendations. A pre-Ramadan assessment is vital for any patient with diabetes who intend to fast in order to evaluate the risk and to see if the patient is safe to fast or not and to educate the patient to self-manage their condition during Ramadan to produce a patient-specific treatment plan. And most people with type 2 diabetes can fast safely during Ramadan with the support of their health care professional. A post-Ramadan follow-up consultation is recommended. Ramadan Kareem, thank you.